You remember that one time I told you guys not to leave it on here too long or else it'll stick? And then I immediately left it on there too long? Oh, thank God it came off. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're gonna learn how to make a gallery lid and this type of lid simply has this little seat on the inside of the piece simply so that the lid can sit right there and this piece that it sits on is called the gallery. Now we've already gone over how to make a drop-in lid, lids that have a little piece that drop right on the inside of something like this, but they don't have a seat. They don't have a little space in which the lid can sit. Instead, the lid itself has a little piece in which drops straight into the cylinder and keeps it nice and tight. But in this video, instead of modifying the lid, we're gonna learn how to modify the piece so that the lid fits to the piece instead of the piece fitting to the lid. But before that, we have to learn how to throw this little piece, this gallery sit in right here. So let's go ahead and get our piece ready. Once you have a nicely sized cylinder, it's time to make that gallery part. You know, it's a part I said earlier where you sit stuff on top of other stuff. It's like a shelf, but inside of another shelf, like a, like a self shepshin Some of you have probably already noticed, but this right here wasn't an added on piece. This was essentially just pushed down from this lidded part right here, at least the lip of the piece. Because of this, it's always a safe bet you're going to need a little bit of extra clay at the very top. So when you're pulling your cylinder, please make sure to release the pressure as you pull up. When you get to about right here, stop putting as much pressure with your fingers when you're starting to pull at the very edge of your pull. That makes sure that you have enough clay at the very top of this right here. Because we're going to need a little bit of extra clay to make this seated piece right here. Once you have the size of cylinder that you want and you have a nice big leftover chunk of clay right at the top of your lip right here, go ahead and put a little bit of moisture right here. We really don't need that friction getting in the way. Now this is always the tricky part for me because there's many different ways and many different tools you can use to make that little lip on the inside, i.e. the gallery. Now when I was learning to make galleries, I was always taught to just go ahead and get my wooden knife and put it in the very middle of this fat part of the lip right here and just mark it. Don't push down, don't push too hard or anything. Just mark the very part where you think the middle is, just like this. Now you see this little line right here? The inside of this line is what you're gonna be pushing downwards. So go ahead and get your wooden knife and put it right on that part right there. Now keep in mind that my wheel is spinning to the right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my tool or whatever I'm making this with on the right hand side. But if it was spinning in the opposite direction, I'd be putting it like this. The main takeaway from this is that you want this to be spinning away from you, away from the tool that you're using. So if I'm going to the right, this is going away from my wooden knife. And vice versa, if I was going to the left, I'd be putting it on the left hand side so that this could be going away from it. But if you're putting it on the left hand side and it's coming towards you like this, then you're just gonna be pushing into the clay body and that's no good. Duh, Dante, I already knew that. Don't talk to us like we're stupid. Look, there's no stupid questions out there, but there are a lot of inquisitive idiots. And once you've gotten your wooden knife and you've put it on the inner half of your clay right there, go ahead and very gently push down. Now, I like to put a little bit of pressure on the very end of this knife right here and just push very, very gently and make sure your tool is nice and straight. You see, and there you go. You have just made your very first gallery. And this is the part that's gonna be holding up all of the weight of your lid when you put a lid on here. Now remember, you don't actually have to use your wooden knife. You can use your metal rib or any other rib for that fact, as long as it has a nice sharp angle in which you can push down very gently to separate that big wad of clay to make your seat. Heck, if I'm feeling real saucy that day, I'll even get my fingernail, turn it upside down, and push in the middle of that clay, and even that'll make a gallery. Potter tip. Make sure you take your sponge or your chamois or whatever have you and just make sure you ride it along the inside to smooth out those sharp angles that you just made that gallery with. Because once you introduce your lid, it might catch on those and you really don't want that. And just like with all the other lids, we're gonna measure the inside with our calipers. We're gonna measure from this end here to this end right here. 
please do not measure the inside of this gallery loop right here. That is not where the lid is sitting. Please measure just on the outside of the gallery, at the very edge of the actual pot, just like this. But just to be clear, we're not measuring the outside of the pot itself, and we're not measuring the inside of the gallery of that little seat lip we just made. We're going to be measuring the inside of the actual pot itself, right here in between those two points. So when you grab your calipers, you're not gonna be doing this, and you're not gonna be doing this right here. What you're gonna be doing is measuring the part that is in between those two points, just like this, right here. I know I'm putting a lot of emphasis on what part you need to measure in order to make your lid, but if you knew the amount of questions I got per day, you would understand. And please keep in mind, after you get this measurement right here, you can always take your calipers, twist this little part right here, and it'll keep that measurement for you without really moving anywhere. You'll be able to keep this measurement. It'll stick nice and safely. Okay, now that we're done with this piece, we can take it off the wheel. And now it's time to make our lid. Please remember to have your measurement nearby with your calipers or at least written down somewhere with a ruler. Lids for a gallery piece are some of my favorites to make and that's because you're essentially kind of making a little tiny plate. The difference in between this and a plate is that a plate has a little rim right here and that's pretty much what you have going on. The only real difference in between making this little lid right here and making a plate is that you need to make sure that this is a very specific measurement so it fits right on the inside of that little gallery or that little seat that you just made on your piece. There's two things that really help me out whenever I'm making a gallery piece for a lid. Number one, I always like to have a little bit more clay than I actually need. You see, sometimes I make a piece that's a little bit too big than the actual measurement that I need. If I went ahead and put my calipers here and I made a little line, this is really all the space I need, this little line right here, you see? I don't really need all this extra clay right here, I just need everything on the inside of this line right here. If I have a little bit of extra clay, all I have to do is get my wooden knife, or any sharp tool for that matter, and push right down just like this. Then I can simply take this part off, and there you go. Now I actually have a sizable lid, something that'll fit my gallery. And the second reason that I always have a little bit more clay than I actually need is because usually when I see people make gallery lids like this, they'll usually just cut it off and then attach a knob later on. But I'm a little bit different. What I usually do is I save up a little bit more clay than I actually need for making a lid so that I can just push down right in the middle, just like this. And if I do this, and I really separate this part right here, this middle portion, from the rest of the clay body, sooner or later, it'll kind of make its own little knob. That way I don't have to do all the extra work to make myself a little knob. I've essentially just made one myself right here. And after you're done, all you have to do is double check that measurement and make any final adjustments. You can either make it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, whatever you want. Just make sure it fits the measurement of your calipers. Run my sponge over it a little bit just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And now we can take this off of the wheel, wait for it to dry, and place it right on the top of our pot. You see, the neat thing about making a flat gallery lid is that usually I would have to turn this upside down and trim the very bottom of it. But since we made a flat one and it fits our gallery perfectly, all I really have to do is smooth out these rough edges. After that, I put it directly on the top of the pot. I don't have to do all the extra work to trim this because it's a flat lid specifically made for a gallery. Now, we just threw these two, and these two are actually really wet and tacky. And most likely, if I put this directly on here, it'll probably stick to the other clay body and it'll fuse together for the rest of its life. And you want to be able to take it on and off as you want to. It's a jar, it's not a complete one piece. Alright, calm down, I'll show you a trick, calm down. Now if you made a little knob piece while you were making your flat lid like I showed you guys a second ago, what you can do is you can take your pin tool, put it through the very, very base of that little knob you just made, just like this, and it should support the weight of your entire lid. This way, you can put it directly on the top of your piece and see if it fits. Boop, and it fits perfectly. But don't keep this on here for too long. You just wanna put this on here to see if it fits real quick and then take it right off. That moisture will fuse the two clay bodies together. So make sure that these are drying separately. And that's really all there is to making a gallery seat or a gallery piece for your lid. It's actually really quite simple once you kind of look at this piece, this top piece right here, as a flat plate with a little knob on it. And after that, it really comes down to just making that little gallery and that little seat with any tool or even your fingertips if you like. 
But the measurement of the inside of your lip gallery is really the most important part. See, making this top plate right here, or this little lid right here, is actually extremely easy. And so is making this little gallery seat right here as well. But making sure you get that measurement just right so that this is an airtight vessel it's really the important part. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. I really hope this helps some of you guys make your gallery lids for your lidded pieces. So this is one of the very first types of lids I ever learned how to do. And it's because it's one of the most basic types of lids that you see all across the world. It's also one of the ones that really help you get those measurements down. So you really need to practice those. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. And I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Wait for it, wait for it, swag.